Hello and welcome to this demonstration video of the Apollo Step Sequencer plugin. It is a VST plugin uh, which I created with the Synth Edit software and you can download it for free at my website misha.nl VST. The Apollo simulates uh, the analog step sequencers that were often used in the synthesizers of the 70s and uh, so it doesn't generate any sound itself, it isn't a synthesizer instead it just generates uh, MIDI notes so you still need an external MIDI synthesizer or a virtual instrument on your computer um, it does respond to incoming MIDI notes so you can use your external MIDI hardware controller to uh, control the step sequencer and all the knobs and you need a external MIDI keyboard to trigger the notes. So that's it. Let's see what it can do and how it sounds. So here it is. Um, first, let's take a look at all the functions uh, on this Apollo step sequencer. Uh, basically, it's two channels, two step sequencers in a row, uh, each sequencer having 16 steps. So this is sequencer A and sequencer B below. They're quite identical. Um, they both have uh, 16 steps uh, featuring pitch control, which are the knobs over here, and the uh, faders below. They are the velocity settings for each uh, step. So you can uh, have different volumes or maybe different um, filter settings for your synthesizer. Um, over here, this display uh, tells you how many steps uh, each channel is uh, running through. Um, you can set them from 16 to 1 to every number you wish. Uh, a maximum of 16, of course. Uh, you can set these for both channels uh, independently. So you can have the first channel running 8 steps and the second channel running 16 steps. Or whatever combination li you like. The divide button over here uh, sets the step rate for each channel. Uh, actually, it divides the uh, pulses coming from your clock, uh, ranging from, uh, well, it starts at 1. So when you set this knob to 1, uh, it will play quarter notes, so one step on every beat. When you set it to 2, it will do two steps every uh, beat, so it will be eighth notes. Uh, so you can go through triplets, sixteens, and so forth. Um, it can be set for the both channels independently again. So you can have the first sequencer running eighth notes and the second one running triplets or sixteens or whatever combination, um, which gives you uh, very playful variations. On the end of each uh, uh, row, you can see this display showing which MIDI channel it is being transmitted to. Again, from ranging from 1 to 16. So every channel can be sent to a different MIDI channel. Um, I have to tell you that uh, when using Cubase, um, this feature doesn't work. Because Cubase only can uh, handle one MIDI channel per MIDI track. So uh, it doesn't matter what settings you uh, have here it'll always go to the same MIDI channel, which is quite of a shame. Uh, although when using a standalone application like VST Host, it is possible to use two different MIDI channels, so you can have uh, two different sounds playing at the same time. Um, the little LED over here shows you the, uh, the MIDI output uh, data, so it'll be flashing with each note. The slider over here is your master velocity slider for both channels. The controls down below here, that makes it quite interesting. Uh, first, your clock source. You can uh, have uh, the internal clock of the sequencer running, or you can have the clock of your uh, host software. In this case, it is Cubase. Um, and I have to say that when using the internal clock mode, this is the speed setting, from ranging from very slow to very fast. Um, when using internal clock, it isn't possible to set two different rate settings here. It'll be just the first setting over here, which sets the rate for both channels. Uh, when using uh, host clock, so in this case the uh, clock from Cubase, it is possible to set two different step rates. So I'll be using uh, a host right now for the uh, example over here. 
Then there's this sync button here, which basically uh, resets the sequencer to the first note each time when you uh, start your host sequencer. Um, so it'll reset it to the first note on the first bar, so it always runs uh, in sync with your host sequencer. The little uh, lamp over here shows the MIDI input activity from your MIDI keyboard, so when I play my keyboard it'll be flashing. Uh, the run button, when this is switched off it doesn't run, simply. Uh, then there's the reset button which sets the sequencer to the uh, first step again. Um, this button over here uh, says uh, reset to zero on stop, so each time you stop your sequencer uh, it'll reset to the uh, first step again. The range button sets the uh, range for the pitch uh, knobs, um, ranging from one to two to four octaves. Uh, which gives you a wider range for uh, broader sequences. Well, the buttons over here, they're very interesting. Um, to the right over here, it's uh, just a simple button switching channel A and channel B on or off. Uh, so you can use just one channel if you wish. This button over here, of both buttons, you can set the uh, arpeggiator mode for both uh, channels independently again, uh, which uh, is actually a real arpeggiator. So when I uh, press the key on the keyboard, it starts running, and when I release it, it stops running and resets to the first step again. I'll show you later. You can set these independently again, so you can have the first channel running uh, a continuous sequence, and the second one uh, running arpeggiators uh, uh, triggered by your keyboard. Finally, uh, the random buttons, uh, they do just what they say. Instead of running from uh, first step uh, all the way to the last step, it'll play uh, random steps, so it'll give you a little uh, surprise when you start it. Okay, well, uh, let's uh, see what it can do. Uh, I haven't connected an external MIDI synthesizer. Again, you need a synthesizer to uh, generate the sound. So what I did here in Cubase was uh, load up uh, Another VST plugin I made with SynthEdit, which is a uh, polyphonic synthesizer called Arion 1. Actually, you can download this one as well from my website for free. Um, and there are also a few other synthesizers, including uh, uh, Polysynth, Monosynth, and a uh, very nice little uh, drum sound module. Um, so this is my synthesizer for right now. Um, so I added two MIDI tracks in Cubase, the first one uh, being um, the input from my MIDI keyboard. So as input I selected my MIDI keyboard over here. The output of this track goes to the uh, Apollo sequencer. The input from the second track is uh, coming from the uh, Apollo sequencer and the output is going to the little synthesizer I just uh, showed you. So you need two MIDI tracks, um, one for incoming MIDI information from, uh, from my MIDI keyboard and the second one going from the Apollo sequencer to the uh, synthesizer I got over here. 